All right, today we're going to talk in Hypatia Academy about APIs. APIs are how one computer program talks to another. You know, out in California now, Silicon Valley, they call this the API economy because all these tools, you know, voice recognition, machine learning, everything these companies sell to each other is APIs. Facebook, for example, has an API. So what does that mean? Look at this diagram here. Okay, we have the public internet. That's you sitting in your house, sitting in a Starbucks, working on your cell phone, or writing a computer program to talk to Facebook, or open weather, for example. Open weather lets you get the, the forecast, and Facebook provides an API so that so that you can update your Facebook page. You being a programmer or you being a, another company who's you know allowed been allowed by Facebook to put data on their website like some advertising companies. All right. Look at these green boxes here. These are Facebook's internal systems and the weather organization internal systems. Those are behind this pink line. This is the firewall. Okay, this is highly secure internal network. You can't connect to it. All right. Cross into the pink line, you're out into the public internet. The public internet, the web pages, you know, when you type HTTP in a web page like this or HTTPS, that's called the hypertext transport protocol. That's how a browser opens a web page. Okay, it's also how an API works. For example, I could call open weather and, and get ask for the weather forecast. Okay, that interface is called REST, R-E-S-T. R-E-S-T runs over HTTP or HTTPS. The S means secure, as in encrypted. You know, if you put HTTPS colon slash slash Facebook.com, it's just encrypted, the traffic there. That's all it means. Now, go open a Facebook page, for example, look at the top in the address bar. It'll look like this. When you click on something, it'll say facebook.com. And then it'll, you know, after this, I have my page here, Hipati Academy. You see this question mark? This is called a query string. This is how you pass information from one Facebook page to another. There's actually two ways to do that. There's a parameter, which you can't see, and the query string, which you can see. So here we are telling the Facebook page that the model or the modal is suggested action. That, that means something to Facebook. And the ID is this number here. And notify type page user activity. Okay, it does mean something to Facebook systems. Now you communicate to that using this REST API and using either a get, a put, or a post. Get means read a page, put and post means write to a page. Okay, we're going to do an example here. Open Weather API. They let you get the forecast, weather forecast, for different cities based on the city name, the longitude, the latitude, etc. It's free, except for, you know, commercial users have to pay something. All right, we're going to show some Python code to do this. Okay, we use two things, two internal tools, one called Simple JSON, which simply makes JSON easier to work with. You know what JSON is. It's a dictionary. It's what we've been using to communicate. Okay, request. 
is another Python framework or API. They call it request for humans, meaning you know the regular request and the regular JSON Python tools are very complicated. So they made something simpler, requests. Okay, now here's what we're gonna do. See this query string? This is the latitude and longitude for Nicosia in Cyprus. We're gonna communicate with this URL, API openweathermap.org, data25 weather question mark. We'll pass it these query string parameters, including this, which is your authentication code. And instead of a password, when you when you sign up to use a web service, they give you a secret key. All right. Now we're going to use the request tool, which just does HTTP post or get. Here we're going to say get. We say we want this URL and these parameters. So it will go out, talk to Weather API. Now we want to get the response. Look, here it comes back. It says cloudy, it says it says the, the temperature, the humidity. They put the temperature like this, 302. I believe, well obviously you have to divide it by 10. It's not 302 degrees in Nicosia. Okay, there's the uh, the barometric pressure, country code, the time of the sunrise, time in the sunset, current visibility, etc. Scattered clouds, the wind speed. Okay, now this that came back here, which we called it, you know. JSON response. That's what came back. This is a dictionary. It has not been converted to a JSON string, which is something that you have to do when you want to write data to an API. So we can print it out. We can say print out the dictionary keys. Now notice right here, for example, it says uh, it says wind. Well, here's wind. That's a key. Uh, weather, here's weather. That's a key, JSON key. It has these attributes, description, icon, main. So what that means, this is a dictionary, I can go get that. I can say, go look up this main key, which was up here, here, it's got this temperature and humidity stuff in it and print it out. So print out the values for dictionary main. There it is. Now look, there's a temperature here. So I can get that just by saying give me the temperature. Dictionary main. This is another key. You know, the key being the item on the left, temperature the value being the item on the right. I'm going to divide it by 10 because it's, you know, it's 300, it's 30.2 degrees in, in Nicosia right now. All right, we did this all in Python, but there's this tool called curl. You know, curl is built into, built into Ubuntu. You can add it to Windows. It does the same thing as writing a Python program. You just say, curl. Now I didn't say git. Git is the default. I'm going to say go get the weather website. Pass it this secret key and then query of the city name Nicosia. Comes back. Here's the weather forecast. Same thing. The other, other example I gave, I used the uh, the latitude and longitude. You can also use the name of the town. All right. In order to talk about writing data, we need a database. 
one database that has a REST API in front of it. It's called Elasticsearch. That's a JSON database. You know, we can click here. I wrote all these commands. You know, which you can look here. Elasticsearch cheat sheet. Um, to give you on one page all the commands. Like for example, we can do get. Now here, look at this. Okay, Paris X is one of my Ubuntu servers. Okay, this is the IP address. It's in the internal network at Amazon. Okay, it's not on the public internet. Okay. 9200, that means what port the process is running on. Okay, we'll talk about that more, but when you when you talk to a program, you have to know where it is, the host name, and what port is it running on. Alright, so this cat indices, that means if you send a query to that URL, it will list all the documents in the in the database. Well I've got Here's one index, it's called file beat. I've got 35,000 documents in it. I got a lot more, but the screen is too long, so I just printed some of them of it. Some of it. All right, how do you add data? Well, we're going to make it in JSON format. Move it over a little bit so you can see. See, but we're going to use put. So we say we want to post to. That says localhost. It should say Paris X. It only works localhost if I am logged on to that box, Paris X. But anyway, we say we want to send it this type of data, JSON. There are other types like text, for example. Okay, we want to put at this address in this index. The number one is the document number. And then here's our JSON. School Harvard. And it responds. Okay, it created one document. And it says successful one. All right. Let's do this below again. But this time let's use Python. Okay, here I want to write student walker. I'm going to put, um, this is document number two, the same index, samples. Okay, it's just as before. We're using Python, same thing. But notice the request item. It's going to be a little bit different because it's going to have a put on it. Because we're going to write something there. You can use put or post. Before we were reading it, so we said get. This time we want to write to the API. Okay, so we're going to say take this dictionary, which is here, student walker, and we have to convert it to a string. Right now it's a dictionary object. We do that using JSON dump string. So request put requires three parameters the URL. The data, here it is, it's going to be this, and the headers. Now, whether a map has you send the headers on the URL, that's not good practice, the security header. Normally when you communicate with an API, you're going to put your secret key in here, somewhere it can't be, well, it still can be read, but not as easily read. Okay, but here we... We have to give it just one header, which is the content type. We're going to say it's JSON. That lets Elasticsearch know what kind of data it's going to send, you know, be receiving. Now we say the end response text. That means show me what it what it did. Okay, here's the response. Came back. It said, "Okay, add one document. Create was the the method." One document created successfully, no failures. 
All right, that's it. That's a review of how, let's go back to the diagram again. See, this is an example of how we can write data to, in this case, it was Elasticsearch, using the REST protocol, which works over the public internet, also works over private internal networks, to talk to back-end systems at Facebook, the weather company, Elasticsearch is a database running on my own server. We send it JSON data, or in the case of the weather weather map, we just send it. Uh, it's called query parameters on the command line, or basically the same thing you type in the browser. You know, as you can see, Facebook does that. For their own tools, you know, question mark, query, parameter, modal. And the next one, notif ID and notif type. All right, that's it.